Welcome to Storytime in the Garden. What a great day it is to read some books. My name is Claire and I work for Burundara Library Service and today we're going to read some books and think about some activities we might like to do while we're a little more stuck at home than usual. We're going to start with our acknowledgement to country so you might like to join with me with the actions we always like to do. Here is the earth and here is the sky. Here are my friends and here am I. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we work, live and play. Today we've got a lovely book. It's called Florette and it's all about living and being in a garden, which is what we've got happening today. Let's find out what happens in this beautiful story, which is written by Anna Walker and it's published by Penguin Viking. Florette. When Maeve's family moved to a new home, May wanted to bring the garden with her. But her mum said she could make a new garden, but there was no room among the crowded rooftops for apple trees and daffodils. There's almost no garden at all. Lots and lots of buildings. Poor May. Instead of winding paths and leafy cubbies, all May found was a cranky cat. Hmm, the only cat I can see is this great big lion, scowling with just a little bit of grass around it. And there were lots and lots and lots of boxes. May missed playing with her friends, listening to the apple tree birds and gathering things for her treasure jar. She longed to chase butterflies in the wavy grass. There's no grass there at all, is there? The children are just drawing. Well, it's actually May that's drawing lots of designs in chalk on the concrete. The other children are watching. But the rain washed everything away. She tried setting up a picnic. She's put the picnic rug out and she's made some black pretend trees drawn onto the backs of the boxes. She's done a good job until the apple tree fell over and the daisies went missing. I think her dad is taking the daisies because they're really on boxes, aren't they? Poor May, she looks so sad. May was sick of those boxes. Down below, people moved like ants, trailing between the buildings. Beyond them, May spied an open space a space with trees and a swing. While when May's mum was ready to go to the shops, May ran downstairs and led the way to a new path. Hmm, I think she's going exploring in her new city. She turned the corner and walked over the bridge between the buildings, under the lampposts until she came to a park a park that was filled with tiny stones and empty chairs. It doesn't really look like a park, does it? There's no garden, no grass, no trees and no flowers. I don't think that's what May was hoping for. May drew a daisy among the pebbles. She listened to the hum of the city and the rustle of a tiny bird, an apple tree bird. Can you see it? May ran as the bird took flight. She followed to see it disappear. There it is. I wonder where it's going. <gasps> wow. The bird went into a leafy forest. I think it's a great big window and the little bird has peeped through. And the word over here says florette. Mm -hmm. I can see a sign that says closed on the door. I wonder if it's a plant shop. The forest was closed and May waited and waited. The bird did not come out. May stared at the entrance for a very long time. Then she noticed a stalk of green peeping through the gap. Can you see it? A piece of forest. 
May walked around the corner and hopped across the stones. She weaved her way through the empty trees, under the lamp posts, and back over the bridge. At home, May held her new treasure up to the light. On the windowsill was her jar. There's her jar. It's a jar that she collects her treasures in. A small jar with enough space. Hmm, what's she doing? She looks like she's put some earth into the jar. She's watering the little plant and the children are watching. And there's enough space for that plant to grow. It's magically beautiful. And it grew into May's garden. I think May has helped all her friends create a garden where they play. They've brought lots of pot plants along. Everyone looks happy in that picture and May looks especially happy. And look how beautiful the space looks now. And that's the end of a beautiful garden story. Do you like reading stories about gardens? Even better to read in the garden. There's so many beautiful things we can do when we're in a garden. We could plant some seeds of our own, like these. These have been growing for quite a few days and soon they'll be big enough to put in the garden. There's some radish plants. What else could we do in a garden? Hmm, I know, May had a treasure jar. Perhaps you could find a paper bag at home and you could go around your garden and put lots of treasures. You might like to put some flowers or some leaves or some sticks or some stones. Lots of fantastic ideas. Or you could even have a teddy bear's picnic. You could take your teddy bears and pop them on a mat and have some cups of tea and all sorts of things. I know a song about a teddy bear. Well, it's actually a rhyme. If you hold your hand out, we can do teddy bear, teddy bear, turn around. So here's my hand and round we go. Round and round the garden like a teddy bear. One step, two step, ticky under there. Mmm. There's one more rhyme that comes to mind. It's about two little birds, and sometimes we see birds in our garden. Here's one little bird, and here's another little bird. Can you do it with me? The two little dicky birds, and they're sitting on a wall. Two little dicky birds sitting on a wall. One named Peter and one named Paul. Fly away, Peter. Fly away, Paul. Come back, Peter. Come back, Paul into the clouds. Two little dicky birds sitting on a cloud. One named soft, the other named loud. Fly away soft, fly away loud. Come back soft, come back loud. I hope you have lots of fun reading stories this week in the garden, in your lounge room, in a cubby house, all sorts of fantastic ideas. We look forward to seeing you again soon. See you later.